The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Adam, and today we're going to take a mechanic from a popular video game and combine it with a nostalgic counterpart. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The Nintendo Switch was released in early 2017, with commercials showing a new boxing game to be released with the system. And that got me thinking. When I saw the trailer for ARMS, I got real Rock'em Sock'em Robot vibes. You know, the classic boxing game from the 70s and 80s. And that feeling is really caused by the arm movement in the game. When a Joy-Con would be moved in a punch-like motion, the spring-like arms in the game would extend. I know the arm movement in the game is different than Rock'em Sock'em Robots, but for some reason, this game reminded me of it more than any other boxing game I'd played. So that got me thinking, could I control Rock'em Sock'em Robots with Joy-Cons? And if so, can I mimic the arm movement in the game? For this project, I built just about everything into the plastic boxing arena. The X and Y movement in the base was pretty simple to make, but it required several parts. The first part I designed for the base was a standard servo mount to hold the servos to the base on the side of the arena. I designed the pieces to hold four nuts and bolts, but I did drill the holes into the mount because I wasn't sure what bolts I had on hand. I then designed an extender piece that would attach to where the controller used to connect to so the robots could reach the servos. I designed it so it would intersect the two servo pieces with a screw. And since the servos are in different positions in the arena, I realized that two sizes of servo mounts were needed. The larger mount was used for the x-axis and the smaller was used for the y-axis. For the upper torso, I knew I needed to fit two micro servos in each robot. And I realized I needed to design a new um, torso piece to hold the servos since the original body didn't really have enough room to fit them. And for this piece, I designed a hole in the center for the servos to move the metal pieces connected to the arms and several other pieces to hold the servos snugly in the enclosure. For the slip maneuver mechanism, I designed two pieces that would intersect with a pin. And then I mounted one piece to the base of the robot, or where the feet used to be, and then the other to the upper torso. I then simply attached another micro servo to the bottom of each robot and added another metal piece to push the robot side to side. This did force me to cut the plastic base to give the robots more room. The plan was to use a total of 10 servos, or five per robot. Two would be used to control the arms, one would be used to turn the robot side to side or mimicking a slip maneuver in boxing, and then two would be used in the base to control the robot in the X and Y position. And I would use a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Adafruit servo hat to control the servos and to interpret Joy-Con commands. Each robot is controlled by a plastic controller with two buttons. Those buttons would push a metal rod in the robots up and down to move the arms. The arms require very little force to move, so one micro servo is strong enough to move the arm while keeping a relatively low profile. And then the controller can be moved forward and backward and side to side to move the robot in the X and Y axis. The plan for this project was to keep as much of the robots as possible, while still incorporating the features I mentioned earlier, like the new side to side movement. The servos to move the arms were pretty easy to attach to the robots. I replaced the metal rods with thick paper clips so that they could easily be moved by a servo. I had to design a piece that would attach to the bottom of the torso of each robot that would hold both servos. But next was a little bit tricky. I was faced with the problem of the robot's legs. The legs would look a little odd with the wider torso brought by the servos, so I decided not to include the legs of each robot since I knew the mech for the side-to-side -side movement would already be tall enough, meaning that the new mech with the robot was almost the same height as the original robot. Next, I decided a mech for the new movement. I made a design that would combine two pieces with a pin, allowing the pieces to move together making one piece tilt side to side with a micro servo connected. And after that, I worked on the X and Y movement. I originally had a design that would turn the robots around one point to make the base movement similar to the game arms. But after that, I realized that the original base design of Rock'em Sock'em Robots actually allowed the players to have a wider range of motion. So instead, I ended up incorporating two servos for each robot to move the robots in the X and Y axis. I then 3D designed and printed a plastic piece for each servo to move in the desired axis. The plastic piece was also designed to allow movement from the other servo.
This project was mostly um, mechanical and software design, so wiring up everything really was a breeze. With the servo hat, I just had to extend a few of the wires to reach the connectors on top. Pins 0 through 4 were for the blue robot, with pins 5 through 9 for the red. I chose to use a pretty beefy power supply to make sure all the servos had enough power. And I was mainly worried about this because several servos um, could possibly um, be used at the same time, and that would increase the load. So I chose to use a 20 watt power supply, and that's worked fine. I'm Karen Corbeil, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning! For this project, I needed to find a library that could interpret Joy-Con data. I found several that could take button commands or joystick data, but I found very few that could actually get the gyroscope data from the Joy-Cons. I found several libraries, but most of the ones I found were for Windows. I found very few for the Pi. But I found one that I had some success with, and that was called Pi Joy-Con. And this library actually claimed to interpret button commands and gyro data, which was promising, because again, for this project, if I wanted to move the Joy-Con in a punch motion and the arm to move with it, I would need that gyroscope data. I had a lot of trial and error moments, trying to figure out why one part of the library wasn't installing or why one library wasn't working properly. But after inevitably installing it, I have found the method that worked for me. And all the details of this installation are on the Element 14 page for this video, but essentially I just installed the library as it's said on the GitHub page, but I found out there were a few essential files that were not automatically installed, so I had to go back and install them later. And those files were the UDEV rules. The rules are important to the writability of the Joy-Cons, because the gyroscope protocol required access to the Bluetooth. And I actually found the answer to this from looking over several forums online, but I later found out that, there, um, that the author of the GitHub page actually added this so that if this fails, um, they said that you just need to install this and it should work after that. But with it installed, Pi Joy-Con worked as intended. The library worked with one pair of Joy-Cons. It would receive gyro data from a left and a right Joy-Con. But when I tried with more than one pair, that was a different story. When I called these specific Joy-Cons by using their ID, it worked fine with one pair, but when I tried with another, I would occasionally receive an ACK error, which is a receiver or a transmitter problem, or if I did not receive that error, it would, be a tr it would only interpret two Joy-Cons at one time. The other two would just be slowly increasing their gyro data values, or they would be the same values as the first pair. And I had a friend help me look over the library files and the online forums, and we really couldn't find a solution to this problem. And then again, I'm not really sure if this library is even advertised as being able to interpret more than one pair, but I also did um, email the author of the library to see if they'd heard of this problem, but I haven't heard anything yet. So I ended up making sure everything else worked by using a library that I was familiar with, called EvDev, which interprets button and joystick commands from a large variety of Bluetooth controllers. So I'm using this for now until I can find another solution for the gyroscope. The first thing I had to do with the Joy-Cons was pairing them. And that was very easy to do with the Bluetooth menu, but after that is done, you have to run this line of code that would actually display the event devices. And once you know the event for each device, you can receive data from them. I first wrote some code that would print the code for every single button. And then I incorporated async IO to read codes from multiple devices. With async IO, I could tell which Joy-Con slash event had a button pressed. With Adafruit's servo hat, it was very easy to program the servos. I just had to import the library and I could easily tell the servos to go to the desired position. And again, all my code files and 3D designs are also included on the Element 14 page for this project. But probably all my servo angles and the code will probably not be the same if it was recreated. Because I probably mounted the servo mount at a slightly different angle than the recreation of this project. And all the angles of the servos were really just trial and error. I just kind of figured out what, were the, what was the minimum and maximum values of the arms, the torso, and the X and Y axis. So I'm going to show you um, how I mapped the buttons on the Joy-Cons to the motors and the movements. Uh, again, you know, I tried to make the punching motion work with both robots, and I was really happy that I got it working with at least one because it just kind of proved the idea. 
So hopefully I can get two pairs of Joy-Cons working with um, each robot, or I'm sorry, with working with both robots. But for now, I do have it working with one. But for this, um, you know, I just mapped it to buttons so I could have both robots working on the same Pi. So I'm, in this, I'm just going to show you which, what, uh, which buttons go with which motor. So I made the triggers the arm movements, which I thought was actually a really simple just conversion, just because I kind of th thought that that felt like a punch. Um, and I thought that that just really worked well. Uh, next was the slip maneuvers. I put them at the Y and A buttons just because I thought those were really, I thought those were um, really comfortable, just because they're right by where uh, my finger is for the trigger. So I have Y to slip to the left, and I have A to slip to the right. And then um, I also have in the base movements. I have it at the bottom with the um, uh, with the D-pad, I guess, so the, <laughs> the D-pad of the new Joy Cons, um, just able to move it side to side and uh, forward and backward, but. Really, since there wasn't a lot of um, room uh, to move the robots, I didn't really think it was necessary to put it in a joystick. I can easily do that in the future, but since a joystick I think is a little um, unnecessary, especially since it really can't be moved very far, I just thought buttons were a really easy way for the player just to say, you know, move to the, move to the left or move to the right. I thought that was a lot easier than the joystick. But um, I can always do that in the future. But right now, uh, this all works. I really like how, yeah, the punches worked out with the with the uh, ZR and ZL buttons. I thought those are really nice. But for now, let's fight. So, as for the mechanical design and the Joy-Con implementation, I think this project was a success. But I still don't think I'm done with it yet. I'm still stumped on the problem with receiving more than one pair of Joy-Con values at one time. So if you've ever worked with a project with Pi Joy-Con, or even a project with Joy-Cons on a Raspberry Pi, please let me know at the Element14 community at element14.com presents. So hopefully I can fix this problem. But as for now, I'll see you next time.